Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about vera composting. So this is a long overdue video and it's probably going to be a multi-part series. So if you follow me over on Instagram, you already know that I started a vera compost and I ran into some issues. So obviously I wanna show you my setup and some of the trials and tribulations I have had with it. But I want to discuss today the actual Verma cast and some of the science behind why it's such a popular product and maybe debunking some myths. So there's two really famous quotes made by two particularly old dudes, which I'm sure we're all very familiar with, Charles Darwin and the other one being Aristotle. Charles Darwin described worms as the unheralded soldiers of mankind and aristotle described wormies as the intestines of the earth so that's kind of cool but one thing to note is if you're in canada and you're using vera compost as a way to reduce your waste something to understand is that it is considered an invasive species particularly in ontario where it doesn't get as cold where I'm here in Saskatchewan zone three, red wigglers in particular don't really survive very well here. So we don't have that issue. However, if you're in a warmer climate, I heavily encourage you to properly sift through the material just to make sure you're not transferring any eggs or worms. And I will leave a link down below to Ontario's Invasive Species website just so you can get a little bit of a better idea of how serious this problem is. But I digress into the actual vera cast and why it's so popular. So vera compost is a non-thermophilic bio-oxidative process. So those are two very large words words to describe why it's so unique. It's different from hot compost in the sense that it doesn't get warm and it's different from most compost in general because it goes through a bio-oxidative process, meaning a digestive system. So there's just two different features there that make it slightly different. So it's not a compost and it's really not a manure either. It's kind of like a hybrid of the two. When it comes to regular composting, there is a curing time that's approximately two to three months. Now, if you're a composter in Canada and particularly in areas with really short growing seasons, you know that most compost you can't use until two years after the day you started the compost, or in some cases, if you're lucky, one year from the compost start to finish. And this is just because the downtime during the freezing cycle obviously impedes this. So curing is referred referring to the process of allowing a finished compost to sit, to allow the nitrification process to take place, basically changing ammonium into nitrate, which is a usable form of nitrogen for the plants. So if you watch the video that we did on the 17 essential nutrients, you watch the nitrogen video, you already probably understand a little bit of what I'm talking about. So compost needs to cure and I've talked about in my seed starting um, setups how you can actually tell when a compost is done based on whether or not seeds are germinating inside of it. So with Vera compost, the actual curing process is only approximately two weeks. And that is all the time it takes for that nitrogen to become bioavailable and that to be actually used without any repercussions to your plants. When we look at the nutrient analysis of compost, vera compost versus regular compost, there are some things that do pop out and make vera compost slightly unique. Now, the type of worm doesn't matter. However, the contents you feed the worm does and will actually cause this to vary by a little bit of a margin. So the first thing to look at is the carbon to nitrogen content. So the C to N ratio is 12 to 15 carbon to one nitrogen. I just want, yes, one nitrogen. So that is kind of the range of the carbon to nitrogen ratio. When it comes to actual nutrients, when we look at nitrogen, we're looking at 1.5% to 2.5% nitrogen. This is compared to a bin compost, which is about 1.4. So in some cases it can be on the higher side, which is never a bad thing. When we're looking at the phosphorus, 
but in particular with the vermicast is pentaoxide, phosphorus pentaoxide. So it actually has five oxygens attached to two phosphoruses. It's not in the bioavailable form of phosphate. So there is a little bit of uh, phosphate cycling that needs to happen there for it to be bioavailable. But right up front, it's 1.25% to 2.5%, which is actually really high, especially when we care compare it to bin compost that is only 1%. This is what makes vericompost or vericast so useful when we transplant or when we're bumping seedlings up because seedlings and their roots really enjoy that extra phosphate or phosphorus. So the next nutrient on the list is the last number in the digit, and that is potassium. And in particular with the Vericast, we're looking at potassium oxide. So it has two oxygens attached to it. So there is again, a little bit of cycling that needs to take place in order for that to become bioavailable, but that can range anywhere from one to 2%, which is right in line with about what bin composting is at. So there's not huge differences between the nitrogen and the potassium, but there is a huge difference in the phosphorus. So that's just something to keep in mind there. One thing to also look at is that the mineralization in the Vericast is not just the nitrogen, not just the phosphorus, but there is some sulfur mineralization that takes place as well. So if you're growing anything in the brassica species, such as cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, Vericast is a great addition if you don't want to use something like a cow manure or a regular manure. There is some sulfur content in there, which is obviously pretty valuable. So one of the really common things we hear about when it comes to Vericast is this pathogenic, anti-pathogenic properties to it. Now there isn't a lot of studies to suggest that this is the case at a very notable level, but there is some research showing that it does have the ability to reduce potentially harmful versions of fungi, bacteria, and then obviously weed seeds. And this is just because the actual compost, all the organic materials in it are going through a digestive tract of the worm. And so we end up seeing a little bit better results when it comes to actually mitigating um, pathogenic issues. Now there's nothing that I found that shows that planting in Vericast means you're gonna have potentially less disease or anything like that. So that's not necessarily the case. But one thing I did find that as a gardener, you may find interesting is that if you have powdery mildew, I've repeatedly mentioned the fact that the mulch surrounding a powdery mildew site, infected plants, the actual foliage, leaves, stems, you name it, and sometimes even the soil surface to an extent is all contaminated. So you really shouldn't compost that because fungal spores are notorious for surviving literally the coldest colds and the highest heats. So the best way to actually compost powdery mildew stuff is through worms. So they will ingest it, it goes through that bio-oxidative process, so it basically goes through a process where there is zero oxygen present and it will actually turn powdery mildew infected debris into something that no longer carries it. So if you're using it as a way to potentially counteract some diseases like that and still compost those products, their compost is your answer in that case. But other than that, there's nothing really to suggest it has antimicrobial or antibacterial anything properties. It just simply removes potentially harmful substances from the plant biomass that wouldn't typically be removed in a hot compost scenario. And in this case in particular, that is for fungi um, and then bacteria, it is released or eliminated in both hot compost and then vericompost as well. One of the reasons why vericast or um, vericomposting is so popular is because it is a waste reduction method that can be used in your home in Canada, literally all the time. And that's because of the fact that our compost here in Canada 
freeze. And that freezing is kind of irritating because in my case, I've had like literal mice sitting on top of my compost, eating away at my eggshells, which is obviously irritating. So um, with the Veracast, it's really simple because it's indoors, it's in the garage, basement, wherever the case is, it doesn't smell. And so it's a way to compost or reduce your footprint without the frozen compost pile outdoors. So I'm gonna be doing a few videos on composting in Canada. I'm doing a two part uh, step process right now. I'm doing Bokashi and then I'm doing the Vera compost. And I'll show you kind of what those setups look like. I may add a third process into that. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet if I'm going to, but I'll let you guys know if I do. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. So the Bottom line when it comes to Veracast is that it's slightly better when it comes to phosphorus, but I want to just give it a gold stamp as the only thing you should use when we're talking about using organic materials in our seed starting or in our outdoor gardening or house plant areas. You should always aim for biodiversity and that includes composts and manures. So the more the merrier, mix up the species, mix up the sources, you name it, because all this different biodiversity is gonna mean different types of microbes and all that fun stuff. And that's actually something else I should note. There's no research indicating that there's some sort of exotic microbes that don't naturally exist in the soil found in Veracast. It's all just the same stuff that we would typically find in most compost or most manures. So just something to think about. Um, it's a great product. It's a great waste management tool for us in cold climates, but I don't know if I would willingly spend a ton of money on Veracast only because I just don't see it being that drastically different unless if it was the new amendment you were using and it was just a part of your cycle. So I'm a cycler. I will go through different types of manure every year. I will use different types of compost every year. I really like to mix and match because everything has a slightly different macro and micronutrient profile. So just something to keep in mind. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what video you wanna see next. And if you're looking for more information on Veracast or Vera composting, come join me on my Lee Valley Live this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I will leave the link for that down below and you'll be able to ask me all the questions you want live. I wanna thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.